This is the battle between the old and new Land Rover Defender. I'm Diaz and you're watching the SUV Battle Channel. Land Rover Defender performed exceptionally well compared to its recognized rivals. Mercedes G63 and Ford Raptor in the Clash of the Titans 2 video, as well as Cadillac Escalade and Hummer H2 in the Clash of the Titans 3. Links to both of these parts can be found in the description. I recommend watching them first if you are new to the channel. In this video, we will check out the capabilities of the new Defender on the Rockgate Trail, which has already been completed by Toyota 4Runner, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Nissan Pathfinder. Similarly, link to this video is in the description. In order to figure out how good or conversely bad the new Defender is, the previous generation Land Rover Defender will also take part in this video. The other contestants are Hummer H3, with a transfer case akin to Wrangler's Rubicons 1 and Toyota Land Cruiser 76. This quartet will have to overcome four obstacles that are drastically different from each other. A climb with deep holes and a lot of small pebbles, a rocky gate, an S-shaped turn with a steep slope, and a lengthy sandy hill. In the next video, the same trial will be a testing ground for Land Rover Discovery 2, Land Rover Discovery 3, and Land Rover Discovery 4. Therefore, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, and hit the bell to be notified, and not to miss this epic comparison of three generations of the same model. The 2006 Hummer H3 is the first one to blast off. This is the most off-road version of this model. It is equipped with a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon's transfer case. In addition to the central locking differential, the vehicle also possesses a rear one. ARB OME Nitro Charger Sport Suspension and Continental Cross Contact ATR tires add a finishing touch to this vehicle. Given the complexity of the obstruction, Four low and center diff lock are engaged. The car unhurriedly steals up and, after reaching the diagonal hangings, easily deals with them. Even when almost coming to a complete stop, the Hummer effortlessly moves forward thanks to the efficient operation of the traction control system. Full stop occurs at the same place where the Nissan Pathfinder had been unable to continue the climb in one of the previous videos on the channel. The wheels are spinning and, to the sounds of the engine running under load, the Hummer continues ahead, stalling on diagonal hangings and stopping almost at the finish line where the climb angle becomes even steeper, which means that wheels are under greater stress and the traction control system can no longer cope in such conditions. It's time to engage the rear locker. As one would expect, after skidding until the rear locker was engaged, the American SUV freely dealt with the situation, and we have the next participant on the way. 1996 Land Rover Defender with a 3.5-liter V8 petrol engine. It has full-time all-wheel drive and central locker without a traction control system, so the owner additionally installed an ARB rear differential lock. The suspension is the same as that of the Hummer. The ARB OME Nitro Charger Sport while the tires in use are General Grabber AT2, which, by the way, are also part of the Continental Concern. Low range and central locker are activated. Living up to the legacy of Nissan Pathfinder, but lacking a traction control system, the Defender is slipping on a diagonal hanging. Notwithstanding the imposing suspension travel, it is not enough for the suspended wheels to cling to the ground and ensure forward movement. The driver turns on the rear locker. It is clearly seen how both rear wheels are vigorously digging the ground and stalling. The Defender goes ahead. The Defender easily passes the section where the Hummer stopped and needed the use of rear lock. But do not forget that its own rear locker is still activated. There's nothing wrong with that as there is still a lot of testing ahead, and we will have the opportunity to fully unleash the potential of this SUV. 
The next contender on the start line is the 2020 Land Rover Defender with a 3-liter turbo petrol engine. Besides an effective traction control system, this Defender also has electronically controlled central and rear differential locks. Impressive arsenal. Now, let's see if this will help it cope with the first impediment. Rock crawl mode and low range are activated. Having reached the first diagonal where the old Defender got stuck, the new one slowed down to overcome the obstacle at low revs. Even when the front right wheel is lifted in the air, there is no hint of skidding, and all wheels rotate at the same velocity. Such behavior is typical for a car with a lock differential, not only on the rear, but also on the front axle. After making a stop, the Land Rover continued climbing without experiencing any complications until the finish. Meet our next partaker. Toyota Land Cruiser 76 is armed with a 4.2-liter turbo diesel engine. It has a part-time all-wheel drive, so there is no central locker, though there is a low range and rear locker. To warm up, we will employ only the four low. Unfortunately, due to sufficient acceleration, the driver went through a pit with a diagonal hanging. Significantly slowing down did not lead to any difficulties and the Toyota darted beyond, showing excellent movement of the suspension. Or perhaps the rear locker was engaged. It is highly suspicious that all four wheels synchronously skid after a short stop. We arrive at the second trial, a rock gate. The Hummer H3 is the tip of the spear. Four low, central, and rear differential locks are activated. The Hummer stalls, trying to cling to the rock. Right down the middle of the distance, the rear axle deviates and the Hummer lifts the front left wheel. You can clearly see how it clamps and the loaded front right wheel pulls the car uphill. Of course, this would not be possible if not for the work of the loaded rear left wheel. Special thanks to the rear locker. On the other hand, probably the hammer would have managed without the rear differential lock, using only the traction control system. But we will never know this. That is why I always insist that contestants consecutively turn on their off-road arsenal. The next entrant is 1996 Land Rover Defender low range and central locker are activated. Just like the previous participant, the Defender slips a little at the very beginning and reaches the main obstacle with diagonal hanging. The Hummer passed this place thanks to the traction control system. However, this Defender lacks it. The hung wheels skid and the vehicle stands still, rubbing away the tires against the rocky soil. As soon as the driver employed the rear locker, the Land Rover got out of the situation with the gracefulness of the English Lord, though nowadays under Indian administration. Next is the turn of the new Defender. Rock crawl mode and low range are activated. The driver goes as smoothly as possible. It should be of no surprise that the Defender has no issues with the first diagonal. Thanks to the well-coordinated work of the traction control system and two differentials, the Defender manages to maintain the trajectory and not shift to the right, where there is a risk of getting not only a side cut on the rear right wheel, but also a high probability of contact between stones and the right threshold. Excellent performance. Toyota Land Cruiser enters the ring next. The driver decided to start with the basics, four-wheel drive with four high. Pay attention to how much the behavior of this car differs from the previous participant. A lot of sharp movements that do not contribute to the proper passage of complex obstacles. Let me remind you that right now the car is driving in four high. 
sliding to the right and finding itself on a diagonal hanging, the Toyota shifts and is unable to go further, consequently rolling backwards to switch on low range and rear locker. That's a different story. Without deviating to the right, the Land Cruiser drove along the Defender's trajectory as if there were no impediments at all. The third test is an S-turn with a slope and rocks of different sizes. By custom, the Hummer H3 starts first. Low range and rear locker are activated. The car approaches the first diagonal, hurls stones with its rear wheels, and slows down for a moment, but then immediately goes further, stalling a little already at the end of the line. Has the obstacle become so easy? After all, in the video SUVs from the 2000s, all three Nissan Pathfinders had to suffer quite a bit on this spot. See the link in the description for more details. The next contestant is the original Land Rover Defender. Low range, central and rear lockers are turned on. Land Rover rushes ahead so swiftly that it passes the first diagonal. Thus, let's roll back to stop at the point of fixation and continue moving from a problematic position. Thanks to the rear locker, the obstacle is easily and naturally subdued. For clarity, it would be best to drive without a rear differential lock, but perhaps let's leave it for next time. Now it's the turn of the new Defender. The low range is activated, as well as the rock crawl mode, in which the electronics immediately lock the central differential while the rear one is locked when necessary. The car creeps up as slowly as possible, thereby excluding any possibility of overcoming obstacles due to additional speed. After enduring the first chunk of the distance, a characteristic metallic noise is heard and the Defender freezes in place, skidding with all the wheels. The attempt to pump the gas did not succeed. Let's go back to slightly change the trajectory by going a little to the right. We proceed backwards once again. Now, let's take to the left. Yet again, the same metallic sound. Following rolling a little further rearward, the driver directs the car even more to the left. It should be noted that the two previous contenders quite easily cope with this hurdle. Another step backwards and the Defender finally finds the very path along which, having lifted the front left wheel above the ground, it manages to finish this test. Following the Defender's ride, a metal object was found on a large rock. Presumably, this broke off from the lower arm of the rear independent suspension with which the Defender clung to a stone and could not continue any further. 
possibly this is the moment of contact. I wonder how the Toyota Land Cruiser will deal with this hindrance. The car goes in standard all-wheel drive mode. For the accuracy of the experiment, we make a stop at the fixation point so that there is no passage because of gain speed. Without a traction control system, the Japanese SUV helplessly slips with its wheels, thereby dispelling possible doubts regarding the level of difficulty of this challenge. Any attempts to alter the path, combined with a slight acceleration, were unsuccessful. As a result, the only option left is to activate the rear locker. But as you can see, the rear differential lock is by no means a panacea for all challenges. The first part can be completed only gaining a bit of acceleration. Afterwards, the car faces the same issue that the previous participant had. The Toyota clings with the elements of the rear suspension to a large stone in the center. The car pulls back to pass as far as possible on the left side, but the rear axle is shifted to the right, turning the Land Cruiser almost perpendicular to the direction of the road. If only the Land Cruiser had a traction control system or front locker, in such case, the inactive front left wheel would help pull the car up. After making a few more attempts and ensuring that the stone cannot be removed, it was decided to get on top of it with right wheels, while going to the left as far as possible. Having hit the rear bumper, lifting the front right wheel, and thanks to the power of diesel engine, the Toyota Land Cruiser successfully conquests this trial. And so, we reached the final test, a lengthy sandy climb. The new Land Rover Defender starts first. Terrain response employs sand mode. Transmission is put into drive position, while the pressure in tires remains as usual. The car builds up impressive speed and, without slowing down, reaches the middle of the ascent. I suggest you lean back in your chair to enjoy the rapid flight of the Defender to the finish line. The next participant is Toyota Land Cruiser, four-wheel drive, four high, and standard tire pressure. After a lightning-fast drive by the Land Rover, it might seem like a diesel-powered Toyota has a hard time accelerating. Having reached the middle, Toyota significantly slowed down. Switching to a lower gear only provokes a large slip of all wheels, and it is no longer possible to gain speed in these conditions. The old school Land Rover is ready at the start of the track. Central differential is locked, tire pressure is approximately 22 PSI. The mighty V8 does not go fast, but perhaps this is the case when a little patience goes a long way. The place where the Toyota had to give up and return to its original position poses a threat to the Land Rover as well. The wheels are fiercely skidding, scattering sand, and you might think that a little more and the car will come to a full stop without any possibility to continue the ride. For a better understanding, it is here now that is to say a little further than the middle of the distance. 
And then, apparently remembering its legendary off-road ancestors, the Land Rover perked up and rushed forward, successfully completing the race. The Hummer H3 in starting position. Central locker is activated. Tire pressure is about 13 PSI. Steady acceleration to the best of the capabilities of the 3.5 liter petrol engine. After traveling one third of the total distance and reaching a place where the slope becomes steeper, the driver downshifts which allows not only not to lose speed, but, on the contrary, even to start accelerating. Great pace despite the slope and loose sand. The Hummer clearly goes faster than the classic Defender. That's how much he has already traveled, and, as you can see, very little is left to the finish line. Great ride. The only contestant who has not conquered the tedious climb is Toyota Land Cruiser. The central locker is activated and the tire pressure is reduced from 41 to 29 PSI. This time the Toyota goes noticeably quicker, completing the first third of the track literally in one shot. Having reached the obstruction, where the last time the vehicle pulled over and could not go further, now switching to a lower gear and throwing sand with all wheels, the legendary Japanese SUV passes the most difficult section and finishes to the delight of the model's fans. Well, friends, you have just watched how four SUVs faced four tests, which means it's time to take stock. Hummer H3 proved to be excellent in all tests. The tandem of the traction control system, Rubicon's transfer case, and the rear locker works wonders. To top it all off, wheels placed at the corners of the bodywork led to an incredible geometric off-road drive. The object of envy for many other SUVs, as a result, this iteration of Hummer H3 became a big surprise for me. Toyota Land Cruiser 76. It's classic gentleman's kit with part-time all-wheel drive. Four low and rear locker made it possible to easily handle all the tests. However, unlike modern SUVs equipped with a traction control system that allows them to pass without additional action on the part of the driver, the Land Cruiser 76 will likely require you to activate the rear differential lock. To achieve this, you will first need to switch to low range. As you can see, not everything is so simple, but on the other hand, very reliable. Finally, we have made it to the most crucial part, the new and old Land Rover Defender. The classic Defender, in spite of all the difficulties, successfully vanquished all hindrances. Luckily, it is furnished with everything one would need for this. Low gear, central, and rear lockers. Since all this is purely mechanical, it requires a certain level of knowledge from the driver. How and what in sequence, and what exactly to utilize in each situation. Although it can also be considered as an advantage, less electronics means higher fault tolerance which is especially important away from civilization. New Defender is the complete opposite of the old one. Comfortable air suspension will not only smooth out bumps, but also expand the ground clearance if necessary. Unfortunately, this did not help the car during the third trial. On the plus side, the smart all-wheel drive algorithm with electronically controlled differentials will allow the driver with little to no experience in off-road driving deal with even the harshest obstacles. Now, According to the plan, the awarding of winners should take place. Initially, I didn't want to do it, in view of the fact that the new Defender is very different from all the other participants who showed almost the same result. Nonetheless, there are important nuances. Therefore, the traditional award begins. Third place, original Land Rover Defender and Toyota Land Cruiser. 
they demonstrated an almost identical result, despite the difference in the all-wheel drive designs. Let me remind you that the Indian Englishman has full-time four-wheel drive, while the Japanese vehicle has a part-time one. Nonetheless, where cars with traction control systems can keep going either in standard mode or in four low, this couple will have to gain additional acceleration or turn on the rear locker. In other words, they would need to move to the next level, taking advantage of additional off-road arsenal. Second place, Hummer H3. Just like the original Defender and Land Cruiser, the Hummer is provided with both low range and rear locker. It's what unites them. However, unlike them, the American car has an ace in the hole in the form of a traction control system. Earlier, I already explained what kind of edge it gives to the car. This seemingly small nuance adds the Hummer an additional point and brings it to second place. First place, new Land Rover Defender. Its all-wheel drive algorithm was the best among the participants in this competition. The traction control system is as efficient as possible and prevents wheels from skidding, while a rear differential with adjustable lock takes the SUV's capabilities to a whole new level. All this is controlled through an intuitive menu and does not require special skills from the driver. The Defender will crawl dutifully in rock crawl mode and will open the throttle to maximum in sand mode. Some will say that this is a gadget on wheels, while others will simply buy this car and enjoy the ride. That's all for today. Let me know in the comment section below which car surprised you and from which one you expected more. I'm Dias, see you in the next video.